My name's Neil Chesterton. I'm a vet from New Zealand. I'm going to talk here about the design of a foot bath for large grazing herds. Here's a foot bath typical of the herds we saw when we were working in Chile and learnt the stuff. This is a, a bath for a herd of 800 dairy cows and I want to show you a video. It looks okay in the picture but you look what happens when the cows use it. They appear to be flowing through quite well, but there's pressures going on. We'll look from the other side to show what's happening with the feet. In actual fact, before they go into the bath, there's cows slipping and pushing to get in, causing damage to their feet, then contaminating the foot bath and possibly spreading the digital dermatitis, which is another cause of the lameness, on the same farm we realized that we needed to find a foot bath that would flow better. All the foot baths there were, had some problems. They were ending up contaminated because of poor cow flow. And so we first started off by looking at all the foot baths that were on the farm and seeing what was wrong with each one. And so we saw eight design features that were causing poor cow flow in the present foot baths. The first one was where cows had to step down into the foot bath. When there was solution in there, lots of cows were reluctant to step in until they learnt about the foot bath. The second thing was many were building the foot baths up, like on the photograph on the right, where the foot bath was built up, the cows went into it all right, but then before they stepped down, they stopped, holding up all the cows behind them. And of course the foot bath became contaminated. The third thing we noticed was slopes or gradients in or out of foot bars. Cows don't like slopes. Many times they slipped on the slope, it might have been hidden under the solution, or they couldn't, they, they, were, they were frightened by the slipperiness of the slope. Um, sometimes the slipperiness was before the bath or inside the bath, and again the cows were afraid and contaminated the bath more. Another thing we noticed, some of them were plastic bars and um, without a carpet or something in the bottom of them, they were frightening to cows. The cows were reluctant to walk in. When they walked in, the noise or movement of the bath caused them also to be afraid and contaminated the bath. The picture on the right there is another common thing that, we, that was done there was rounding off the edges of the, what we call the nib wall around the foot bath thinking that it would be cow friendly. In actual fact, cows have great difficulty focusing on where to step when they've got a rounded edge. So the cows would balk at that foot bath as well. Many foot baths in the Chilean farms we learnt all this on were in diversions from the usual exit for pathway of the cows. Instead of just going out that way every time after milking, on the foot bathing days they would be diverted like these two foot baths here. It was something strange, they balked to go through it and again they ended up contaminated. Another common problem with these big herds of cows, you know 300 cows up to 1200 cows was narrow single cow width baths. As they came out of 40 bale ro herring bones they all held each other up, like we saw in the very first video. There were four other things that ended up with more contamination. Four other factors. The first one was bars that were longer than three meters. The cows would enter the bath and start to lift their tail, and if it was more than three meters, they contaminated the bath. This was made even worse by a good intention to have a cleaning bath beforehand. Often at the end of the cleaning bath, they were just lifting their tails and then contaminated the very bath that was meant to have the solution in it. So long bars was one problem. Another one was small volume bars relative to the size of the herd. Small little bars like the one on the right there were contaminated after very few cows had gone through it. We needed bigger bars. Foot bars positioned at the entrance to the cow shed or the entrance to the holding yard or the collecting yard were a 
because well, it was hard to get rid of the muck inside there. They weren't cleaned out properly and they were another contamination risk. So here's the same farm we saw before with the new bath design. Look at the cow flow of a herd of over 800 cows. Now walking through there without too much concern. Very little fear of the bath. Very little foot damage happening before because they're not fighting to get in there or get out of there. So that ended up with our recommendations. For good cow flow and less contamination, we constructed all the foot bars in the exit race. The footpath is part of the exit race itself, not a diversion when you want a footpath. The footpath must be at least a metre and a half wide. We liked it a bit wider, but sometimes that's how wide the exit was, so we made it a metre and a half. The length mustn't be any shorter than two and a half metres, because if it's too short, one foot only goes in one time. They've got to put at least two feet in it to give it a better chance of getting the solution but also a maximum we found of three meters. Any more than three meters, we ended up there getting more contamination. So we limited the length to three meters and hoped that the width, that it be at least two and a half. The next key thing was that the floor of the bath must be exactly the same level as the approach and the exit. So the cow in that picture you can see there walked from the same level into the bath, the same level, and then out of the bath, the same level. They liked it. They weren't afraid of what they were going to stand on, either up or down. We made them with 20 centimeter concrete block walls, just put onto the existing concrete. It was so simple to make, so cheap to make, and farmers are more likely to do it if it's easy. The next thing is our solution depth could be right up to 20 centimetres if we wanted to, but we aimed for 8 to 10 centimetres as a minimum. Another key thing was the top of the blocks were flat. We filled them with concrete but kept them flat. We just ground off the edges so we didn't have a sharp edge to catch on the dew claws, but the important thing is it's flat. Cows can see that edge and accurately miss it or stand on it if they want to without fear. The next thing is that the volume of the bars must be big enough that the, for the size of your herd. If you have 800 cows, you must have at least 800 litres. If you've got 300 cows, it must be at least 300 litres. The next thing is that to clean that bath out, because we don't use it every day necessarily, when it's empty, we want it easily cleaned and we had a big drain hole in the corner, 10 to 12 centimetres at least in the lowest corner. The farmers' comments on these farms were, as you can see there, most farmers were happy with them. 13% said they were average. No one said they were poor. The cow flow was so good. And we found that the contamination rate was so little. Each, most of the big herring bones had 40 cows on each side. Out of those, the average was less than two, contaminating the bath out of 40. So the design is cheap to build on an existing concrete surface and can be easily in, included in the design of a new cow shed. Thank you.